from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At that time there shall rise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds for the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches become tender and sprout leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he is near at the gates. Amen. I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Instead of going home to do chores, I think I might need to go out and do something outside. I don't know about you, but it's just it's two beautiful days, isn't it? God gave us this day to make the most of it. Let me ask you, though, what are the top priorities in your life? If you were to sit down and list them out, what would be your priorities for today? What would be the priorities for your life? And if you wrote them down and then looked at how you really lived your life, those priorities matter. Where are you putting your energy and your time? Let me ask another question. If you knew that you were going to die next week, what would that do to your priorities? Would it change how you behave? Or would you live next week, this next week, exactly the same as you've been living? Or would you do things a little bit differently? And why? If we stop to reflect on our life and how we are living and where we really believe our priorities are, I think most of us, because of human nature, will find that we're not spending our time and we're not spending our energy necessarily on the right things. And God is calling us to a deeper relationship with Him. It's human nature to put off difficult things. It's human nature to say, well, eh, I can fix something later. Next week I can work on that relationship. Next week I can call that person I've talked to in a while. Next week I can start getting in shape. Next week, I can start actually eating properly. That's the one I like the best. And then always next week. <laughs> Saving money. How about your prayer life? You putting that off until next week, too? Every day that we have is a gift from God. When we look at those gifts from God, sometimes we get too used to them. Do we stop and really look at the miracle of the cosmos and how the sun comes up for us every single day? Or do we take for granted that tomorrow will be the next day and the next day and everything is going to go out the way it's supposed to and our priorities are just fine? This week's gospel is about running out of time. It's a little bit of a complex gospel to unpack, but let me give you the setting for it to see if we can make it make a little bit more sense. So the story is actually set with Peter, James, John, and Andrew. They're sitting on the Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives is the about a mile or so opposite Jerusalem, and you can see down into Jerusalem sitting there. And in another part of another gospel, Jesus is sitting there and he's weeping over Jerusalem, soon to be destroyed for his lack of faith. And so he talks to them about Jerusalem being destroyed, and then we have today's reading when they said, Well, when is this going to happen? And Jesus gives them that response that, I don't know when it's going to happen, it's only for the Father to know. But watch for the signs, and it is going to happen sooner than you're ready for. It's going to happen in your lifetime. And sure enough, the Romans do come and destroy uh, Jerusalem in 70 AD, only a short period after Jesus walked. What he said did happen. Jerusalem ran out of time. You and I have a 
a limited amount of time on this earth as well. Where are our priorities and are we going to run out of time before we have all of our priorities in order with the Lord when we judge them? If we really knew our death was coming, and it was coming soon, how would we live our lives differently? Most of us, probably for good reason, would say tomorrow's going to be another day. Because we'd be right every day except for the very last day of our lives. But it's a little sobering to think that some of us won't know the last day of our lives. Many of us won't. <coughs> some of us might. But most of us will wake up very much thinking, today is just another day. And by the end of that day, we'll be meeting our Lord face to face. So we have to live every day as though it were our last day. We have to learn to love each other and treat each other with compassion. How do we set our priorities, knowing that that's the way we're supposed to live? Jesus was asked one time, we see it in the Gospels, Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he responds with two. He says, to love the Lord your God with all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. When we go out to set our priorities, those should be the two things that we root our priorities in. Loving God, loving our neighbors, loving our families, loving the strangers, loving those kids in the cafeteria that we don't get along with, loving our coworkers that we don't get along with, loving our siblings that I'm sure we all get along with well, no matter what our age, by the way. Loving God and loving neighbors the way to start when we start to look at our priorities. Now, it might seem a bit impractical to try to live every day as though it's our last, because, let's be honest, if I knew for a fact that tomorrow were my last day, I'm not breaking the leaves today. <laughs> I'm not doing laundry. <laughs> so we do have to remember that there are practical things that we have to do, knowing that tomorrow is likely not our last day. But we have to behave as though life is going to come to an end. We have to behave in a way that we are ready for when it happens. This week I was speaking with someone who had a whole bunch of exams coming up, college exams. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was in college, there were a couple classes that got away from me, and then I tried to do that, that, that strategy that doesn't work for those of you who have not gotten to college yet. Don't do this. Don't try to make it all up in the last three days. Anybody else ever do that? It doesn't work very well. In our relationship with God, we have to do the same kind of thing. We have to pay attention for success. We have to continue to grow our relationship every day. We can't wait until the last week of our life, the last hours of our life, to try to make our relationship with God everything it's supposed to be. We can't wait until that last week of our life to make our relationship <clears throat> with our friends and our spouses the way it's supposed to be. We have to work on it every day, a little bit at a time. The Lord designed us to grow with each other. And grow in relationship with Him. <clears throat> Not just those around us, but grow with Him as well. So, how is it that we should live our lives? Loving God, loving our neighbors, and working it every day. So that when our last days come, we're ready. So, when we go grocery shopping, ordinary acts of life, Look for opportunities to be thankful to God for the things that we receive that we can put food on our table. Do we offer up those little chores like doing laundry as a way of saying, this is an act of love for my family? In the little things that we do, we continue to grow in love of God and love of neighbor we do with God. St. Teresa of Lazou died at 26 years old as a doctor of the church, which means that she had so much to teach to us that we go back and study and learn what she taught. St. Therese is also known as the Little Flower. Why? Because of the way that she lived. She said, I live my life as one of the wildflowers in the field that most people walk by and don't even notice. But as I grow towards God, I glorify Him in the beauty that He has given me. What an amazing way to look at life. 
And the one thing that she also gave us is something called the little way. The little way says this. The little way of St. Therese says that everything we do, even the smallest thing, can be an act of prayer and an act of glory to God. If we live our lives in a way that, that we glorify God, even through the simple tasks of life, we are making those steps every day toward when our time comes up and we come to know God. God doesn't measure us on our successes in life. He measures us on how much we love Him and how much we love our neighbors. That's what we're told to do. So here are a couple of practical ideas for you for this week. First would be this. If you knew your life was ending soon, I suggest getting a confession might be a good idea. Do that on a routine basis. Why? Because not only are you freeing yourself of the sins, but God gives us grace in that great sacrament. So that as we see what where our struggles are in life, and those repeat struggles that we have, God gives us the grace to get a little better and a little better and a little better. <laughs> That's one thing that you ought to do if you knew your life was ending instead of me. So keep living as if you were going to live for just another week. Another practical thing, spend a little more time with God. You're going to be spending all eternity with Him, we hope. <laughs> Might be good to get to know Him a little before we get there. Spend time in prayer. He longs for your presence, just like you should long for His. <coughs> so as we prepare for our last days, here are a few more basics. This is my list that I made for myself as I was thinking about this with my priorities. Love more deeply. Seek forgiveness. Apologize more. Put other needs before my own. Pray more. And hug my family a little tighter.
departed into the light of your dwelling place, including Judy Stacy, Earl Benson, and Paul Elliott, that they may gaze upon you for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all the intentions listed in our character of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Loving God, hear the prayers of your family before you, those spoken and those which we hold in the silence of our hearts. If it be your will, grant answers to our petitions. Open our eyes and our hearts to see how we can help bring these petitions to fulfillment by loving one another as you have loved us. We ask this through Christ our Lord, 